and I am here to make some soap tonight. And I am particularly excited about the soap that I am making tonight. Uh, one, I got my new mold, Crafter's Choice 1501. This is the one I wanted. It's exactly the right size for what I need. The one that I had, the batch size was too big for what I want to make, and the bar size was slightly too small, so it just wasn't really working for me. Um, it is, however, for sale if anybody wants it. It's in, it's in one of my other videos. Which one is it? Um, I can't recall, but the last couple ones I've made, I've used that, that mold if you want to have a look at that. And second, the soap that I am making is a request from a very special friend of mine. Someone who I've known for quite a long time and said to me, can you make me some bacon soap? Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I've made a couple of batches of bacon on accident soap. But tonight I'm making bacon on purpose soap um, by request. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm not going to really show you my setup because it's more or less the same pretty much every time. Sorry about my arm. I am doing something different with my lye water tonight. I usually put my titanium dioxide in my oils using water-soluble titanium dioxide. And everybody kind of wants to know why, I wouldn't say everybody, but I did ask a question on Facebook in one of my soaping groups and just said, hey, you know, I do it this way. And people said, oh no, you should definitely add it to the water. So the thing is, is that I do add it to water and then I add it to my batter. So I'm doing it the way that it should be done. In the meantime, um, I did notice on the last soap that I made that my soap batter was actually smoother where I had just titanium dioxide. So I am going to go ahead and add just titanium dioxide to the, like the whole batch and see if that helps or see if it was you know, the pigment that was making the one section of the soap that wasn't as smooth as this segment that are. It was a swirl soap and part of that I left natural with titanium dioxide and the other half was colored with a green pigment. So the white part came out smoother. I want to know, is it the titanium dioxide that made it smoother or is it the pigment that came out not as smooth? So we're going to make the whole batter with titanium dioxide. And I actually do have some extra TD mixed up just in case I want to make it more white. So let's go ahead and get started. <sighs> the pigment for the, I'm going to use burgundy oxide in a small amount that kind of makes it more of like a Canadian bacon color, like a hammy kind of color. So, I'll go ahead and mix that up. The titanium dioxide is already mixed with just the oil. I just mixed the burgundy for some, for some reason. <laughs> well, I've also made an effort to kind of keep everything out of the way. Because last time I used the new camera rig, uh, I am using my iPhone stacked up on boxes, and I've kind of figured out a new way to keep it out of my way and higher so you're not just looking straight into the bowl because that's kind of boring. And there we go. So, and last time in my effort to do this, I made a big mess. So, I'm making a better effort to keep everything out of the way. Okay, add my milks. This already had my KO in play in it. I skipped the colloidal oatmeal. I feel like I still need a super fine strainer for that. And I don't really like that some of the bigger pieces from the oat flour is getting through, so. Okay, this is basically an emulsification. And if you watched my video last time, I didn't trust myself that I was at emulsification, and I traced way too fast. I am going to do a tiger stripe pour on this one, so I want it to stay a little more fluid. Okay. Get this out of the way, oops, for now. I'm going to try and do this in more or less equal parts. Okay. 
four less even, one's 25, one's 25.3. Okay, move our, move that out of the way. We are gonna go ahead and do a little more titanium dioxide. Can you see what was that? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and blend this up. Nice and loose. Let's go ahead and pour this in here. I guess the mold is excited to get started. I haven't even used it yet. It's already got a little soap there. Okay, time to get started. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> And this will still work as a tiger stripe. It'll be a thick tiger stripe, but it will work as long as I keep everything pouring right down the middle. Like I said, this happened to me before when I was trying to do this one, this particular pattern. It thickened up on me really quick. I basically just had to keep shaking down, which is what I'm gonna do tonight. I would like it if someday I could work fast enough to not to be able to work at a loose consistency. It seems like I'm forever getting thick trace no matter what fragrance I'm using. I think I've only had two or three batches where two or three batches where it didn't get real thick on me. So I've increased my olive oil. Now on this one, I'm using one that has palm in it, and I kind of wonder if it's a um, if it's the palm, because when I lowered the palm and increased the olive oil, I didn't get this gloppiness at all. I would really like to know where my other spatula went. Now this is really weird. Don't you really hate it when things just disappear on you? The other day I was making some uh, olive oil infusions and where's my other spatula? At least this showed up now. Sometimes you can stir it down, it loosens up a little bit. But anyway, the other day I was making some olive oil infusions and I lost one of the caps. I figured, well, I'll find it when I'm cleaning, and I never did. And I had just changed the garbage, so it didn't get thrown in the garbage, because actually the only thing that got thrown in the garbage was um, like the tea bags that I used was the only thing, and the paper towels. That was the only thing that disappeared on me, or that, that was the only thing that got thrown away, because I had just cleaned the kitchen and took out the trash and did the floor so I could get ready to do soap stuff. And it never showed up again. It just disappeared. I thought the same thing had happened 
with my spatula just now and I was going to be really upset and a little bit scared because I don't like it when things go missing. There we go. All right. I wasn't planning on doing a fancy top. I don't particularly care for stacked tops the way that I do them. I just don't have the ability to make them so pretty and fun the way that other people do. But we're over full, so we might have to might have to work with that. <laughs> Hi, kitty. I'll be right there. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat was scratching at the screen door. And she's so spoiled and so used to getting what she wants exactly when she wants it, as I'm sure all of you who are pet owners have pets who are the same type of personality. But she's just going to have to wait because, as you can see, audience, I am busy working on the soap. swirl this now. Okay. I just needed some extra white up there. Let me just dig in here and get some of the white out. Okay. That'll work for me. And then we can do a swirl. Let me texture the top. Okay, I guess that's it. It is going to be a little bit tall, a little overfilled just a little bit, but I managed to save the top and make it a little textured and swirly, which is exactly what I was after. But if my, if this mold is going to work better and my recipe is going to work better for it, then I might be able to start practicing doing some of those swirl tops a little bit more. Okay, let's not shake down the mold anymore. Just put it along the side. There we have it. Bacon soap. The fragrance smells like bacon bits, and the colorant will lighten up to be more of a hammy color. So go ahead and uh, 
let this gel and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Have a great night. Thank you for watching.